I've always been a Republican, but I've never been a politician. But, you know, God came knocking on my door last summer disguised as an angry mob, and it, it really did wake me up. What I've learned is that the people out there in this country are just sick and tired of cancel culture and the poison of critical race theory and the big lie of systemic racism, all backed up by the threat of mob violence. We can try to blame Donald Trump, but the truth is bottom feeders have long had a home in the GOP. But the new crop is better at saying the quiet part out loud, like you just heard. Case in point, Mark McCloskey, the St. Louis man who proudly waved a gun at peaceful Black Lives Matter protesters last summer, is now running for Senate. Andrew Giuliani, who first rose to fame as the unruly toddler of Rudy and later held a vague sports-related job in the Trump White House, He's now running for governor of New York, and this clown, Vernon Jones, is running to the right of Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, an expert in voter suppression. Jones's big campaign proposal is yet another audit of the 2020 election results. As many a great philosopher has said, what the... I don't even want to say the next word. They, we, I don't know if we have a bleep button ready. Joining me now is Rachel Venman, the co-host of the Suburban Women Problem podcast, and Lucy Caldwell, political strategist and campaign manager for the Joe Walsh's 2020 presidential campaign, making her return on Cross Connection. Uh, happy to have both you ladies here. Lucy, uh, you're the returning champ. I'll uh, come to you first. Look, I think as we look across this slate of candidates, and you and I have talked about this, um, they're saying the quiet part out loud. They've always been problematic, I think. The part has always been problematic. So I know you're, you know, going through uh, a, a political homeless uh, stage right now. But I have to ask, as a conservative woman, um, you know, this is where I, I have challenges with some of the never Trumpers because it's fine. You didn't like Trump, okay? But when you vote down ballot to support some of these Republican candidates who enable Trumpism. I mean, does that really help? So what's your advice to conservatives when it comes to voting down ballot for some of these folks uh, running that we've seen? I think it's very, very difficult because on the one hand, you want to reward some Republicans who are showing vague, tiny amounts of courage, people like Liz Cheney or Brad Raffensperger or maybe... I hate to say it, but even a Brian Kemp, who is the, the incumbent in Georgia who's being challenged um, by that candidate you mentioned, the problem is that they all themselves are complicit in Trumpism in some form or fashion. And so you're right, these, these forces have always been present in the party, and now they're at the front of the bus. But a lot of the, well, let's just try to promote good Republicans, the real danger in that is if there's any amount of complicity whatsoever among those people, and we have seen there is, then you still have a problem and you still have the kinds of undercurrents that led to where we are now and that really imperil our democracy. Yeah, um, imperil our democracy. And I would say how for a long time. Um, Rachel, I'm really intrigued by your podcast and welcome to the show. Happy to have you here this morning. Uh, I'm curious. I mean, absolutely. I want you to take a listen to this sound from Vernon Jones, like who we just talked about, who's running to the right of Brian Kemp. Take a listen. Today, I stand here along my fellow Georgians to express my commitment to the integrity of our elections in the state of Georgia. What happened in November 2020 should never have been allowed to happen, and it would not happen again. I'm here today to call for an immediate fluorescent audit of the Georgia 2020 election. <laughs> I mean, let me just first say that Vernon Jones does not represent any large portion of uh, the African-American population in this country, but I'm sure he represents things to make uh, conservative people who don't look like him feel uh, comfortable. But Rachel, I, your podcast, uh, I think, is based in Georgia. I, I ask you the same question. When it comes to voting down ballot, what advice are you offering people, particularly as you're talking to suburban women? Well, uh so actually, our podcast, we do have a co-host who is a state legislator in Georgia. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's what you're thinking of. And she's lovely, Dr. Jasmine Clark. Yeah. So I would say when I watch uh, Mr. Jones speak, what I see is a performance, not politics. And that's really what comes to mind most. Look, we know what our problems are. Women know what the problems are. The problems are not election integrity. The problems are not trans kids and their rights. 
or any number of things that the Republicans want to distract us with. So what we really need to do, the person who is going to win votes and win elections, it, particularly down ballot, is the person who addresses the problems that we know we have. So they can do all this. I mean, that was just theater. What what you saw was purely theater. And I would suspect that Mr. Jones is probably pretty happy that we're talking about him right now, because yeah. this is just the kind of earned media that he desires. And it's fine. We can do it, but it's not solving any problems. He created what he in that clip is he has created something that doesn't exist and he has proposed a solution. Meanwhile, in Georgia, voting rights are being taken away. People are not getting the vaccine in numbers that we would like to see. Uh, you know, there's still a problem with poverty, with education, inequality, and he's not addressing any of those issues. Right. It, they're, gonna yeah. they're going to continue to lose voters because they're not dealing with the issues. Yeah, I, and I think you're right. And look, I hear your point. He probably is happy uh, that we're talking about him. It's always a, a struggle. He's very thirsty for attention. So much I had to block him on Twitter. Um, but we, we wanted to acknowledge some of the worst uh, of the worst, and he qualifies. Oh, sure. Lucy, yeah, definitely. But I hear you, because uh, I, I, I wish we could ignore him. Lucy, um, I'd ask you, because this whole thing with, with McCloskey, um, you know, for me to say Black Lives Matter, for me to just declare that my own life matters, not matters more, not matters less, just matters. Uh, his whole claim to fame was pointing guns at a, a protest declaring that same thing. Why in GOP circles is saying Black Lives Matter considered such a partisan or polarizing issue? It's a polarizing issue because the Republican Party is a race to the bottom over white grievance. And someone like Mark McCloskey, I mean, to go to Rachel's point, yes, this is performance, maybe just performance, but now performance is politics. So Mark McCloskey, if you watch his launch ad, it's a real tour de force of bigotry and hate. He talks about how Black Lives Matter protesters, who, let's be clear, were walking along the sidewalk by his home last summer on the way to peacefully protest at his neighbor's house, the mayor. And I think because they're Black Lives Matter protesters, he said that those people were trying to come kill him. He talks about how in his ad there's no systemic racism, yet he refers to peaceful black protesters as people who are there to kill him. I mean, the guy is insane. The reason that people like Mark McCloskey are getting a hearing is because their message actually is resonating, unfortunately, with Republican voters more than the message of someone like Liz Cheney. There's a poll this week that shows that Republican voters from January until now, Donald Trump has actually become more popular in a hypothetical primary matchup in 2024. Yeah, it's 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 insane. Um, we're going to continue to have this conversation uh, on this show. So thank you, Rachel Vinman. Your debut was excellent. You'll have to come back. And uh, Lucy, your friend of the show. So I anticipate we'll see you both a lot uh, in the next coming months. And up next, I just had to pass the mic this week to my friend, the brilliant Tanahisi Coates. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned.